Hi, it's Phil from Delphi Technologies, and you might be wondering, why do we have a van half in the workshop and half outside? Well, today I'm gonna to take you through a DPF regeneration. And to do that, we, I'm gonna take you through some of the safety elements on it, and definitely some of the pre-checks. Come in a little bit closer. You're gonna be able to see here that I've removed some of the heat shield that allows us to access the DPF pressure sensors. Now, something I want you to do before we even consider a regen is to use a manual gauge, whether that's analog or digital, start the engine and take a pressure reading from the pressure sensor here. So just remove the pipe from there, put your gauge in and do that pressure reading. If the engine is idle and you're, you're only getting a reading of around three millibar, then that is perfectly fine and no regeneration is needed. Then rev the engine up a little bit around about two and a half thousand RPM. If your gauge doesn't go above 40 millibar, again, there is no regeneration needed. There's too much risk of doing damage to some of the components if you continue a regeneration when there isn't one needed. So two little safety checks first, do your pressure tests, and then if the pressure is high at this point, then you may need a DPF regeneration. Now, some people ask, why is a manual regeneration required? Well, it may be, for example, that your customer only does short journeys and that soot is building up in the DPF and it hasn't been able to go through a self-regeneration and burn that levels of soot off. It's a really sort of common thing that happens when people buy these diesel engines just for local use. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go and get the diagnostic tool and we're gonna execute the regeneration. So we've got the DS480 ignitions on. We're gonna type the registration number in. And that has pulled up straight away that this is a Volkswagen Caddy 2016 with a DFSF engine code. Now what we can do when we go to the regeneration, we'll select diesel system, straight into diagnostic, and we're gonna communicate with the vehicle. So I'm gonna go down to calibrations and adaptations, and we're gonna to go to regeneration. And here I can see all of the prerequisites. So it says the engine must be at idle, the coolant temperature must be at 75 degrees, we need at least a quarter of a tank of fuel, if it's an auto, it's in park, the handbrake is on, and the bonnet is closed. And then just follow the instructions as it goes through the software. So we're happy with that. So the thing we need to do is just close the bonnet. Okay, bonnet's closed. Next thing we need to do is start the engine and make sure that coolant is at 75 degrees. Let's go and start the engine. We've met the test conditions. Engines are idle, coolant temperature is 75 degrees. The engine's nice and warm. We're gonna check the exact temperature in a moment. We've got the fuel level, and a bonnet's closed, and we can go through to the procedure. So to start the procedure, we're gonna to need to activate it in the software. We need to press down the clutch and brake pedal, then let them go, press the accelerator all the way, and then that will begin the regeneration. So let's go ahead and do that now. Sending that command to the ECU. We've got to check the coolant temperature target value is above 75 degrees. So at the moment we are only at 69 degrees, so we've got six degrees more to go. What I'm going to do to get the temperature up a little bit quicker, increase the engine RPM to around two to two and a half thousand, and that will only take 30 seconds, 60 seconds, and we'll be up to temperature. So let's do that now. Right, engine is at the minimum temperature. Let's click OK. So it just gives us that prerequisites again. Go straight from there. And we're gonna follow these step-by-step -step instructions. So let's just bring that across. So press down brake and clutch pedal. Release brake and clutch pedal. Press down accelerator at the bottom. Release. And the regeneration has begun. So we can see here that this is the temperature after the DPF, the diesel particulate filter, and this DPF regeneration is gonna climb and climb and get fairly hot. So because this is a dry system, we've got two DPF pressure sensors, one before the DPF and one after the DPF. The one before the DPF should hit somewhere between 550 and 650 degrees on this dry system. If this was a wet system that Eloys use, then it would be a little bit lower. So we're going to wait for the regeneration to complete now. We can see here regeneration is active. The temperature is already beginning to climb. So we're getting part way through now. We can see the soot content is dropping. The temperature is up at nearly 470 degrees. What we've got the ability to do is to switch it to maximize mode and then switch it to graph mode. So we can see here that we can bring up on the temperature. We can see it's steadily climbing. 
currently at 494 degrees and this is the DPF sensor, uh, the temperature sensor after the, the DPF. Really nice to sort of see that. We're probably getting close now to the perfect temperature where we're going to start burning that soot and all the ash that's left then will just sit in the filter. But by doing that, we're going to be able to unblock and allow it, uh, a freer exhaust flow through the uh, DPF. Right then, so at the end of the regeneration, the engine RPM began to drop, the engine temperature began to cool, and then finally we get the successful box that we've completed regeneration. What we can do as well is if you want to print a calibration certificate for the customer to say that it's been complete, then we've got here in the dialogue the regeneration. You can put your own logo in here, which is quite nice, and we can come through here to say that everything is completed and regeneration was successful. So you can always give that certificate um, from the tool directly to your customer. So thanks for watching and be sure to follow us on social media or visit the Masters of Motion online hub. And if you want to continue your training further, then you can look at our expert-led courses at the Delphi Training Academy. See you next time.